Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kojo Sheldon and this is Combo with the Head. Now, this is an interview a lot of people on this platform have been calling for and I'm glad that we've been able to put this together and he has availed himself for us to have a sit-down interview with him and understand his policies, especially for the youth because we are a youth-driven platform. Now, um, the man that I'm about to interview is a successful businessman, a philanthropist, a politician, um, he's seen it all. He, he, he's been to everywhere. He's been in our news feed. He, he's, he's basically that guy, as we have been seeing on our platform. He's seeking to lead them into the 2024 general election. Um, throughout the um, campaign process, he's put out policies that a lot of you um, agreed with. There are some people on this platform that do not agree with some of the policies that he's put out there. I personally, I have done a series of videos, you know, challenging some of the policies that he, he's put out. And there are some policies that I believe this would actually work for everyone. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to do any long things here. Sitting here, or I'm sitting here with Honorable Kennedy Kumpreko a Japan. Honorable, welcome. Thank you very much. But you pigeon. Oh yeah, why not? So you speak pigeon? Yeah, they speak pigeon. Okay, so you are going to be comfortable with pigeon. I don't have a problem. No problem. So, honorable, two hundred and seventy-five um, constituencies. You have combed everywhere, um, talking to the delegates, trying to convince them to vote for you to lead this party into the uh, twenty twenty-four general elections. First of all, what has been the reception like towards your policies and your message to the people that? hey, vote for me, this is what I'm going to do for you. What has been the general reception? No, the reception has been very good because uh, I think so far, the only candidate who goes out there to tell the delegates his vision and what he has for them. A lot of people, they go there and they only talk about their positions they've held in society and therefore they are qualified. But I go out there to tell them, look, that we have a lot of challenges as a nation, and therefore we need a pragmatic leader. The problem in this country has been that most policies are just theory. They are not practical. And as a businessman, I've realized that, look, most of our policies are not good for the country. And we have to be practical. So I believe in pragmatic approach instead of theory. Mm -hmm. So I go there and give typical examples, just close by them, but they, they don't know what they can do with it. Mm -hmm. I give them example. Do you know what we can use maize or corn for? And going around about 275 constituencies, except those of you who have opportunity to travel outside, that know that corn cooking oil, we can use corn as cooking oil, mm -hmm. and is one of the most healthiest and expensive cooking oil mm -hmm. in the world. We grow corn or maize everywhere, even in our backyard here, but they don't know what to do with it, except of Banku and, you know. Hello, Ghana. Are you going out? Book Breeze Ride and get up to 50% discount on your next ride. Download Breeze from the Play Store and the App Store now. They are porridge and chewing, mm. uh, you know, the toasted corn, mm. the whatever. So I tell them, you can use corn for cornflakes, mm. Cyrillac. You can use corn for ethanol. And when you mix corn ethanol with our petrol, the cost of our petrol will go down by 20%. So why don't we take advantage of that? We can use corn for poultry feeds. Mm. But all these things, we are not doing and keep importing, importing, importing. Mm. Cassava. I have cassava plant. Mm. We've acquired about 125,000 acres. We've already planted or cultivated 30,000 mm. feeding the plant. Mm. And what you can look, I always say, the youth of this country should listen to me, that cassava is more important than gold. So if we know the usage, will not even degrade the lands because of gold. So one, we visited Thailand, a Greek ministry in Thailand. They line up the products that they use cassava for, from biscuit, tapioca, starch, ethanol, flour, 
a lot of things. So with my plant, do you know that the cassava we produce, uh, the starch we produce, you use it for drugs. All pharmaceutical industries, every drug they produce, there is starch in it. So the demand all over the world is so high that if we have about 300 cassava plant companies in Ghana, we we'll have demand all over the world. We can use the same cassava flour. We can use the cassava for ethanol. We can use the cassava for the tapioca, your banku, you eat, agbelema, and all those things. When you put them together, we can use cassava for 40 different products. Young man here, when you open, you can plant cassava. So I give them practical examples. We use palm, the palm oil, to produce fritter oil, to produce soups, even the byproduct of the husk. When you go to Benso, for instance, they use the husk to generate electricity. You see, but honorable people would say we do not have the facilities, the the industry, the processing factories to go through all these things. That is what I'm saying. Okay. That agri mechanization and agro processing. Okay. Agro processing. That's why I use my starch plant as an example. Okay. That you know, we got thirty thousand acres to feed the plant. Mm. And my estimation, first 18 months, we should build the factory. And the same first 18 months, you cannot get cassava to plant 30,000 acres a year. It will be in batches. So six months, you cut it. Another six months, you cut it. So by the time you complete about 30, 40,000 acres, the plant is ready mm. to feed the factory. So we are not going to go into a Greek without the agro processing. Hell no, we are not going to do that. Honorable, there are people that would also argue that you have been in government for a very long time. So why did you not suggest these brilliant ideas that you have in your head to, to you know, the government to actually... I have suggested several policies, but because I'm just ordinary member of parliament, when I suggest that to the committee in Parliament, the minister goes out there with his technical guys and he takes the advice and nothing. Let me give you one example. Two. When I first came to Parliament in the year 2001, we took YAM, myself and my partner, our company is called SuperK. We took it to Holland, a company called Grasso. They deal in air condition and storage facilities. So they cooked the yam, they tested it, and they realized the starch content in the yam is the same as potatoes. Mm. So if they can store potatoes for eight months in Europe or US, mm. then you can store yam for eight months. They took us to about six farms, and all the farms have warehouses, and they are just blowers. This air condition, it will not blow cold, it will not blow hot. The temperature that the blowers give to the stored yam is, makes the yam feel like it's stored in the air. I told Kwashiga and the team when they came to agri committee, they didn't listen. Another example, say, why should we always import fish into this country? Because June, July, August, the bumper harvest, the fishermen will cut the fish. They have no place to store it, to throw it back into the sea. So we need cold stores. But my brother, you don't need a cold store without a blast freeze machine. You need a blast freeze machine where it will blast freeze the fish at a lower temperature, minus 41 degrees, for, 20, uh, for 24 hours. And before you move it into the cold store, minus 12, minus 14, if you cut the fish, and you store it straight, put it into the cold store, it will not meet international standards. Okay. All these things I told them in the committee. Do you know what one of the technical guys said? Yeah. Guy said, oh, we can smoke them. I said, <laughs> Jesus Christ. They can smoke the, the fish. Yes. That is a safer way to... Yeah, and them. this is a technical guy advising Kwashiga Minister of Agri. Can you imagine? So I've done a lot of things behind the scenes for us to change things. That is why I always do it for them to see that we can do it. That is one of the reasons, because um, based on um, statement that you have made before, 
you are not interested in political positions. That yes. is something that we have known you for. Yes. So your decision to contest for the presidency came as a surprise. And I'm sure right now people have gotten used to it. I've realized that I cannot sit back and contribute, contribute, contribute when they don't listen. When I believe in what I'm saying. Mm. You see, I don't believe in the book, book, book. Mm. I believe in seeing it. Mm. I have been to so many countries in the world. And I've had several meetings. And let me tell you, my brother, I don't go into a meeting and talk about $50 million or $100 million. We talk billions. Companies that I've dealt with, they're always talking billions. And when they take you to the factories, their industries, for you to see what they've done, it gives me encouragement that, look, as a black man, a Ghanaian, I can also do it. So whatever I'm saying, I've seen it elsewhere that is working. That is why I believe in it. Like this steel plant that I'm building, about eight steel plant companies in Ghana here, and they are all foreigners. So I asked myself, ah, how can we sit here in our own country? The demand for iron rods and cement, where the cement is only Ibrahim who has come in as a Ghanaian. Everything is foreign. So no. If Ibrahim has gone into cement, I will go into steel. And trust me, the type of machines that I have brought into this country is in the whole West Africa, in terms of production, not the land size, but in terms of production, I'm the biggest in West Africa. Also, I challenge myself because I've seen it elsewhere. I've been to India, I see how it works. I've been to China, I see how things work. I've been to Thailand, I've been to Europe, I've been to America, and all business. So, Honorable, in this case, it's a matter of exposure. <clears throat> how people that we have put in position, positions of power, they are not exposed to the reality of Young man, you've come up with a very good question. You know what, let me tell you the gospel truth. Mm. The best education any human being will have is exposure. You see, Without due respect to people who have learned and have so many degrees and everything, sometimes whatever they are writing, they have not even seen it working physically. But I have seen it. So exposure. You see, those Guineans who travel outside the country, seeing what they see over there, when they come, their perception to things Change. change. So exposure is the best education any human being can have. Okay. So because of the exposure, the type of people have dealt with in terms of business. Mm. Sometimes they say, oh, Kenya Japan, he talks too big. Yeah. yeah, he's too known. He's this and that. Let me give you an example. Is that why you started the campaign on Twitter, uh, show working? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Where you there was a day that you basically profiled all that like I did this, I did that. People did, people had zero idea about a lot of things. Yeah, because when you go out there and say they think you are bragging. Mm. So I'll let you see. Sometimes you passing by what I own, mm. but you don't know I'm the owner. Mm. I just keep quiet. But it's about time I have to encourage the youth to take their destiny into their own hands. Mm. I don't feel shy giving them my background. Mm. My background will encourage the youth that all is not lost. Then I show what I've been doing, capable of doing, coming from that humble beginning to where I am and where I want to go. I showcase all these things to motivate the youth of this country mm. to take their destiny into their own hands. Mm. I go out there, showcase it, so that the perception that, oh, he's a braggart, is this. Well, I'll tell you what I've done. And if you go there and I've done it, am I a braggart? I said I'm going to do it. That's and I've done it. Mm. So what's your problem? Emulate Kenya Japan and you'll be successful. That is what I want to call inculcate into the youth of this country. Arabo, since uh, we are talking about the youth, I need to bring in this. Um, recently, um, the Ghanaian youth took to the street to demonstrate against um, the government. They registered their displeasures and their grievances towards the government and people in positions of power trivialized the whole thing, making it look like it was an exercise in futility, where issues that they raised, um, good roads, um, portable water, uh, stable electricity, um, unemployment rate that is on the, on the rise, the government has to do something about it. 
all these issues raised by these people were trivialized. And we have, we have heard or we have been in positions where people in positions of power, they've, they've berated the youth, like the youth are not part of the decision-making process. They've, they've uh, put out the regulatory comment about the youth, the youth are lazy, the youth are uh, sleeping. They, some of them, they have coconut head. A whole lot of statements wow. have been made about it. are able to say that? Yes, um, a certain member of parliament said um, that typical Ghanaian youth has an empty head, coconut head. Oh, oh yes. you are joking. I don't think you can say that. Honorable KT Hamon. Oh, he my, said my own Yo, senior. Yes. Wow. Yes. I have a video evidence. Uh, this, like, this afternoon, I'm going to. Yes. Attack. So you have to. You have to talk to me because. Yes. So. Uh, this afternoon, yes. I, I say, did what, you say that? Yeah, he said that something like that. So, so what would a Canadian Japan government do differently? How are you going to make sure that the youth is represented in your government? Our voices are heard. You see, let me tell you something. First, oh. I'll answer you, but let me give you one example. No problem. We are here at Moving Peak. Mm. Go, just cross to the hotel itself. The passport? Yes. Yeah. And when you go there, young men and women that are leaving this country, one day, I went there to take a picture. And the guy saw me say, Honorable, we are waiting for you to come. Mm. Call, look. From January to June, I was there in June. Said, if I'm not exaggerating, over one million youth or Ghanaians have left this country. And it's a drain on our human resource. And he said to me, if you don't believe me, just walk out and look on the left and look on the right. Left are those who have gotten the visa, they're coming to pick their passport. Right are those who are now going for the interview. So I just went out and folded my arms, started going around. On the left, counting them. They didn't know I was counting, talking and counting. 9 a.m., I got 73 young men and women who have gotten a visa. Mm. They are so excited leaving this country. It has become a trend on TikTok, actually, where yeah. people transition themselves from Ghana to another country. One, our reason. Mm. Unfortunately, our tradition, our culture, we don't believe in the youth. I'll give you one example. Mm. Growing up, when you see elders talking, and even go and stand there and listen to words of wisdom, they will suck you. Free hakwa akwala bon in pain for din komo. You see, it puts fear in the and it gives a gap mm. between the youth and the elderly. Mm. This has gone on for so long that he used the word trivialize. Yes. You see, people don't have confidence in the youth because they think common sense is by age, which I strongly disagree. Common sense is not by age. It is by how the application of the mind. Mm. So the mere fact that you are older than me doesn't mean I cannot use my head. Mm. So this problem has lingered on for so long that it intimidates the youth to come out mm. boldly mm. because our culture has suppressed the youth for so long. Mm. So coming out there to demonstrate that you need jobs, no good roads, no this, mm. they sit there, one, mm. because of their position that they are holding and how they are making money, they don't care about what is happening, mm. actually happening. Mm. And these are realities. I was outside the country when the demonstration went on. Mm. And I saw how the police the, beat wow, some yes. of the youth in it. I completely disagree. Mm. What is the essence of democracy? The president didn't grant us audience. And you know? The vice president too. Well, maybe that I'll say that uh, for security reasons, but at least somebody should have received yes. your grievances. It never yeah. happened. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Now, we, we preach democracy. And so if you put up such behavior, how do you say that you are practicing democracy? So, Honorable Ken, what are you going to do different Look, from these people? I am going to, empower, people. I am going to empower the youth of this country mm. by inculcating three things into them. Patriotism, honesty, and discipline. I want the youth that are following you, listening or watching, mm. to know that, look, if you want to succeed, and we all succeed and develop this country, we have to be patriotic. Our behavior 
as human beings. We are not patriotic to our nation. We are selfish, greedy. We all want to grab a bit of the pie and keep it to ourselves without spreading it for others to benefit. Mm. That must change. Okay. So I'm going to empower the youth by inculcating patriotism into them. And patriotism, as simplified by saying the second commandment in the Bible that it says, love thy neighbor as yourself. Mm. If you are patriotic, you will not go and steal from government. Mm. If you are patriotic, you will not go and kill for money. If you are patriotic, when they ask you to come to work at eight, you'll be there at eight. Mm. You know, so we need to conscientize the youth. My target is the youth because the future of this country belongs to the youth. Mm. Whether you are the best brain or whatever, still will be weak. Let me give you a joke in it. Mm. We went to Northeast and I came back to Tamale, my hotel room, I was picking the soup and I felt a pain here. My brother, for the past six days, the way I've been suffering from my waist. I'm sorry. It tells you that, hey, you are aging. Yeah. I mean, burning to pick a cry, you have a pain. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, <laughs> if you don't encourage the youth mm. to take over, mm. emulate you and take over from you, mm. and you always want to suppress them, mm. then what country are we building? Mm. Then it means the future of this country is bleak. Mm. If the future of the youth is bleak, mm. the future of the country is also bleak. Mm. So we should empower the youth by giving them good advice. I use my son as an, as an example. Mm. Just recently, I got to know that at one point, he told his friends that he's not sure I'm the father. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't uh, let him get away. Oh, OK, I've heard that story. <laughs> yeah, I didn't let him get away. Mm. And now the things that he's doing, yeah. because I inculcated discipline into him, and now your media engagement and all those things, he pays for it. Mm. I don't pay anything, and he comes, I mean, tapping my shoulder. It's sorted. <laughs> yeah, it's sorted, it's sorted. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had allowed him, mm. you know, the way he was flaunting his wing, my father is mm. Kenny Japan, said, come on, go to hell. Go and sit down. Yeah, <laughs> your, father, your father is Kenny Japan, so what? Uh, you know, mm. so this, if I've been able to change my son, mm. I have the confidence that I can use him as an example mm. to change a lot of, or most of the youth, mm. so that they can work. Again, honesty. I want you to listen to me. Mm. Honesty is key to success. If you want to succeed in life, in your dealings with every individual, you have to be honest. Mm. If you are honest, let me tell you, young men, I always joke and say, even when you are sleeping with your wife, somebody will call you and cry, look, your money is ready. But if you are dishonest, no call in the morning to tell you that your money is ready. Because, you know, the economy or the size of this country is so small. When we are dealing with businessmen who have a stake in our economy to, you know, develop, they know each other. So if you come and dupe me and dupe you and dupe me, you can do three. And these three of us will go spreading your name negatively and it will affect you. Yes. Eventually you see that it's a small world. Nobody will be willing to deal with you. Yes. But if you are honest in dealing with me, yes. I recommend him. You recommend him. Yes. You recommend him. That is how you grow your business. Yes. That is why foreigners have taken over our country. Yes. The level of dishonesty yes. is too much. And we have to inculcate honesty into ourselves, mm. not only the youth, mm. but my target is the youth because we are weak mm. and you have the energy to take over from us. Mm. So what we have done wrong, we have to let you know mm. that this kind of lifestyle will not help you. Is that why you said the <clears throat> National Service, um, you are going to, I mean, when you come into power, the national service is going to be six months in the military and six months in working wherever you want to work. Now, I have argued that um, if you want to curb in discipline or you want to uh, instill discipline into the Ghanaian, first of all, indiscipline has eaten deep into our fabric. So 
from, I mean, from, let's take it from the political side. We've seen instances where a politician in parliament, you know, went to take ballot box, was running away, they were throwing hands, you know, a whole lot of issues. These are people that we look up to. So if you are trying to curb in discipline, and we are starting from the youth, like you are, you are, you are targeting the youth, say, okay, go into the military, spend six months in the military, and when you come out, you are supposed to be disciplined. But the people up there that we look up to, they are in discipline. What is the end game here, Honorable? Let, let me tell you. Okay. Going into military, mm -hmm. it is not only to be disciplined. Okay. No. I want the discipline is number one. <clears throat> you go in there, mm. you learn a trade. Mm. And you, when you see Ghana Armed Forces, like all professions are there. Okay. We only need to empower the different agencies over there mm. or the battalions yeah. so that when we ask the youth, uh, the national service to go in, mm. Maybe by the time you come, the engineer, whatever they call them, mm. if you are a civil engineer, you even decide to set up your own business mm. and not rely on only government for re uh, roads and whatever. So training. Yeah, training. Mm. And I ask or I've decided to let the youth who come out of college to go to military, one, because... Yeah. I've been going around, and the national service, you see somebody who has graduated with first class or second class in administration. Mm. You go to Ghana Gas, for instance, she's at the reception, and the reception is so a cake. They have a long book. You come, you write your name, and you go. Mm. What knowledge is he getting from there? You see, so it's one. Mm. The way we do the placement, mm. we don't help the students to, you know, get experience from whatever knowledge they've acquired in universities. Yeah, in the universities. So some will go to military, some will go to the agri. Mm. Then six months you change. Mm. But the discipline is key. Okay. When you come back, I'm targeting the youth. You gave an example yes. of the MPs. Yes. They are not role models, as you say. They so, are supposed to be role models. Yeah, but... That behavior, mm -hmm. you are saying that you have concluded they are not role models. Because this, these are people we look at. Imagine looking at your MP fighting in parliament. Right. So I am coming back mm -hmm. to tell you, forget about the MP. That's the way forward. Mm -hmm. If you want to succeed like in Japan, forget about the MP who took the ballot box. Mm -hmm. you, if you are disciplined, you're going to make money. You'll be happy for the rest of your life. So I'm saying that if certain age... We've lost it. Mm. We don't want to lose the youth. We don't. Mm. So if we inculcate all these disciplines and every opportunities created for you, you might not go to parliament and fight again mm. if you are a member of parliament. But don't you think we have to do something? So in discipline, cuts across. We are talking about corruption. We are talking about a whole lot of things. My focus is the youth. Okay. My focus is the youth because we are passing. Okay. Out. You are coming in. What is wasted? We are passing out and we've wasted a lot of things that did not help the country. Mm. So those person coming in, we have to make sure we correct the wrongs or our mistakes. Mm. We use that to educate them. That is why I'm saying the youth, the youth, the youth. But that doesn't mean that mm -hmm. if you're an MP and you do something wrong, we don't have to say it. Yeah. We have to say, you know, I've been criticizing a lot of things in society. That is why they don't like me. Even your, your president. Yeah, that's why they don't like me. You know, those Was there the showdown, though? Yeah, the showdown is not an insult. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the see, I'm running for you. will see what will happen. <laughs> so now, the showdown is coming. Yeah, and now it, it has become a household. Yes. <laughs> you know, those things. So, all right, with the youth, two months ago, the government introduced taxes on Burton. And I remember the interview um, at TV3, you, you were outside the studios and they asked you, Honorable, this is the position of government with regards to taxing bet winnings. And you said two things. If you were in that position, you would even increase it from 10% to more. And the other one was to 
because the reason why you would increase is to curb or to prevent people from actually uh, venturing into betting because betting they destroy the youth. Now, recently the GRA, since the introduction of the tax, they came out to say that they have generated 15 million Ghana cities from taxing betting earnings. Now, it means the government is making money from, you know, taxing bet winnings. What is your position now? Are we increasing it? Or we let, let me tell you. Okay. So you I need, see, yeah. it's, it's unfortunate. Mm. All the good things I said that day mm. on TV3, mm. when I said I will increase the taxes mm. to discourage the youth, mm. even the condition I gave, they didn't bring it. Mm. So you media guys, you have to be careful. Your reportage can destroy this country. I said, mm. now I'm not in a position to do A, B, C, D because of unemployment. Mm. So we need to create employment opportunities for the youth. Mm. Then you slap higher tariffs mm. on betting okay. to discourage these young men and women going into betting. I still maintain that. You still maintain Yes. Because let me tell you, okay. a young man like you asks you one question. Mm. Why did you decide to do this and have all these followers? Hold on. <laughs> if, if you had spent all your time mm. at the gaming, whatever, mm. just for betting, do you think they will call you to come and interview Honorable Kenejapon? I don't think so. He's close. So you have answered my question. The reason why most of the, I've, I've engaged a lot of them online, and what they are saying is the betting companies are providing more jobs than the government. As far as it, now let me tell you, if you know, you don't know, I'm in charge of that. Okay. I'm the chairman for defense, interior, and national security. Okay. And gaming okay. is under uh, interior. interior. I know what I'm talking about. But my brother, you remember me tomorrow. Mm. Sample opinion. Take five people from here who will follow your footsteps. Mm. And take five people who will always go to the gaming, whatever, giving excuse that they're creating jobs, mm. and see the progression of the two. Mm. I will never lie to any youth that is coming up mm. to go into betting and all those things. No. So it's a no for, for you? Yeah. But before I can say no, mm -hmm. I have to create job opportunities. That's what I'm saying. Job opportunities. And that is what I said. Mm -hmm. But you see, that young man, very controversial because I met him in Kuforibia. Mm -hmm. He asked a controversial question. They were trying to put him as a so allow him to mm -hmm. do it. He was diabolic. When he asked me that question, and I said, because of unemployment, I'm not able to do A, B, C, D. But if I create job opportunities for the youth, I'll slap higher tariffs to discourage you from... But look, you see, you are young today, and you think you are making money. After all, how much money do they make? How much? And don't forget, I don't hate foreign investors. But the money is going to Lebanese, Indians, and all those things. What is wrong with us? I'll be bold. I'm not scared of any youth. Because yeah. I'll teach you sense just like I teach my son. Yeah. yeah. Why do I want my son to succeed and I want you to fail? Yeah. Then I'm doing a disservice to the nation. Yeah. So what will make you shape up? Yeah. I will tell you. But these fingers, you see, they are not the same. It means my message, not everybody will take it. Yeah. Those who will not take it will be the shortest. Those who will take it will be the tallest yeah. finger here. So my son comes to me, he said, Daddy, I want to talk to you. So okay, have a seat. Then he said, I really want to apologize. I said, mm. why? Say, no, if I had listened to you earlier, mm. I would have made a lot of money. I said, no, you are wrong. You are wrong in the sense that when I advised you and you didn't take it, you went there, experienced it, you hit the wall. Mm. Now you realize your father is making sense. If you had listened to my advice, all the time, you would think that you've left something behind that you didn't explore. You get my point. So you always want to go back. But now you went out there and you've seen that, mm, 
what my father is saying, I have to listen. Mm. That alone is a correction. Mm. And now he's doing very well. Mm. With this Afrochella, he's exporting fish, selling uh, share butter and all those things. He is now jack of all trade. Mm. And I've given him a long game for him to measure. Mm. To beat Kenya Japan, he has to sleep three, four hours. And he has a long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, so whatever advice mm. I give to my son, mm. I have to give it to you. Yeah. So I will not advise my son not to go and do betting. Mm. Then I will come and tell other people's kids mm. that, oh, betting is good. Mm. I am bold. Okay. If you want to be like in a Japan, don't waste your time mm. going there. You are only making the Lebanese and Indians rich. Mm. And what is 15 million cities? A whole GRA coming, that the 15 million cities. That was within two months. No, what is me? So they are saying that they can get more. You see, they have to do something, create jobs. Mm. Now I ask a question. What are they doing with the 15 million cities? That is what everyone is asking. They should use the 15 million cities to create jobs okay. for this youth to stop gaming. Okay. Honorable, so the Ghanaian youth, in five outlines, I want you to let me know or let the audience know. If you get a chance to lead the MPP into the 2024 elections, why should the Ghanaian youth... Believe in Honorable Canada, Kennedy. Yeah, Ghanaian youth should believe in Kennedy Japan because I'm a living testimony. Yeah. When I say I'm going to create job opportunities, yes, I have. Mm. I have created op job opportunities for people, about 7,000 people are working mm. as an ordinary member of parliament. Mm. Now you have youth unemployment, mm. about 700,000. So if I have the opportunity, as a businessman, as a president, yeah. I know how to negotiate for investment yeah. that will create employment opportunities for the youth. Okay. So I want the youth to believe in me that the two, two people are never the same. Okay. Two people are never the same. Yeah. If the previous leader said A, B, C, D, mm -hmm. and he didn't do it, yeah. it doesn't mean Kenya Pond will not do it. Yeah. At least I have lived exemplary life yeah. for you to see that I'm talk and do. So I want the youth to believe in me that the challenge of the youth, that is why they are leaving this country, is employment. Yeah. So under my administration is employment, employment, employment. Yeah. Industries, industries, industries. That will kill everything. And you will see the speed I'm going to take Ghanaians in terms of development. If you don't catch up, we'll leave you behind because enough is enough. If you make a mistake and you are fired, mm. we'll not allow Osofu to come and beg for you. Mm. We'll not allow the chief to come and beg for you. Mm. We'll not allow politicians to call and threaten. Mm. Discipline is discipline. If they ask you to go to work at 8, Ghana here, 8 o'clock, Ghanaian time is 10 a.m. Mm. Under Kenya Japan, Ghanaian time, 8 a.m. is 7.45. <laughs> You've got to be there by 7.45 to start mm. work at 8. Mm. We are not going to allow those two hours. Mm. That's productive man hours wasted. Mm. We are not going to tolerate that. You see, Ghanaians go outside Ghana and they become or are the best workers yeah. because the systems are working. Mm. Our systems are not working. We will let the system work. Mm. And that will create job opportunities for the youth of this country. Yeah. Again, another problem the youth is facing is that all people that are occupying positions, yeah. they become respectfully like Methuselah, they don't want change. Mm. So even if a young man, why they are migrating, the same young men that are migrating to other countries and excelling, mm. is because when they go there, they allow them whatever suggestions, contributions, they give, mm. they take it. Here, somebody has been in one position for a director for 20 years, mm. and he thinks by virtue of being in that position for 20 years, mm. unproductive 20 years, he thinks he, he, doesn't, he doesn't need change. Yes. You are not the one to come and tell him. Mm. But to tell you the truth, we are in a scientific technology world that it is your age that these things emerge. Yeah. So you are far advanced than us, because my girls, when they come from school, 
myself and my wife. What these girls can do on the net, we can do it. Mm. So we have to accept. Actually, we are cake. Time pass. Yes. <laughs> but these directors and the rest, they don't accept anything. Mm. No contribution. It doesn't motivate the youth. You have to sit with them and also share ideas with them. And you see, say, look, these young men, they are of age. Mm. And, you know, you have to engage them. All these things, I'm going to encourage the youth. There will be youth seminars that, as president, I will go there and share my life experiences with them if I'm given opportunity. For them to emulate Kenya Japan. Okay? Mm. So, my target is the youth in the sense that mm. my brother, he has about eight sisters that have finished or completed university in America, mm. and all of them have good jobs. So I feel guilty as a politician, 23 years as a member of parliament, and the high unemployment rate mm. in this country. Mm. I feel so bad about it. Mm. Why should my children who had opportunity or who were born in America to get good jobs at the age of 21? And here, at the age of 21 after university, they are still staying with their parents. Mm. That is why I've decided to lead this country mm. so that I will create job opportunities mm. for the youth. Mm. And I will tap their knowledge. I will open up. Mm. I will tap their knowledge. If not, I will not give you a chance even to sit here and interview me. But I believe in the youth. Yeah. And what I believe in is that one person doesn't have the whole world brains and knowledge. Mm. So it should be collective. You get the brains from all angles, mm. put them together, mm. you see it and use it as a policy. Mm. And I want the youth to believe in me mm. that the youth president is coming. The youth president. And yes. me to be a youth president will YouTube it. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> that is where it's happening. <laughs> so Rabu, um, the, the showdown, the final showdown, this, this was a semi-final showdown, but the final showdown is coming. What is the general atmosphere in your camp? And you know, what are your expectations? When oh. I came in, I see the, the, the fire, the, the blaze, left, right, and... <laughs> uh, you know, I the trust most more. Mm. <laughs> no, we yes. say, yes. my mouth will... But, but 275 say... constituencies. How? Uh, that man has done well. Umre. Hey, you know, me and Mrs. C. You know, I do not go for some... Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mrs. C. Local, yeah. Yeah, but no. what be the general atmosphere? Oh, you no, it's, it's nice. Mm. I've... O open Ukraine here, mm. my ginger, the base of MPP party. No, my discourage. Yeah. A lot of them were not prepared to vote okay. again. Mm. But coming into the race you know, mm. has ginger the base. Yeah. Because I deal with the ordinary people. Mm. May I want to a cross you. And then let my rise here. So I appreciate every human being. Mm. To going to them has ginger the party and it's good for MPP party. Mm. So come, come. Uh, if if you if you get to lead this party into the general election, are we going to break that? I'll beat Mahama hands down. You beat him. No, hands I'll down. beat him hands down. We got bullets and drum. I'll beat him hands down. <laughs> <laughs> but but then in the course of you know the campaign and everything, I'm sure there are bridges that have been bent. There have been issues. You have had issues with people. That at the end of the day, if you get to lead this party, you have to iron it out and you know repair the bridges and make sure said there is a unified force to face you know the parties that you are going to contest against so what are you going to do to make sure say when you are given the mandate you unify the party you, for the tax you party? see if you always listen to me mm -hmm. i've always preached unity and peace mm. in the party okay but if you want unity in the party. Mm. If you want peace in the party, mm. there should be fairness. Okay. That is all I've been preaching, mm. that there should be fairness. There should be fairness. Mm. But unfortunately, mm. this campaign is like Plato's ideal world, mm. where justice mm. is in the interest of the strongest. Mm. And this is not Plato's world. One group will come out with all sorts of things the party, nobody hears them. Can a Japan goes out there to respond to allegations, hey, the whole world, which is very, very unfair. Mm. Look at what they did to Alan. Now he's gone. Mm. You know, I will try, first thing is to try and bring Alan back. 
Then second, if I have offended anybody, I apologize. And now when they also apologize, accept it. So you, then we move. It has the to party. be reciprocal. You have, yeah, you apologize. They apologize. Yeah, they have to. If apologize. they don't, well, if you don't, it's up to you. Okay. Yeah, if you don't, it's up to you. Mm. And you see, the style of campaign. If I win, I'm going to do. It. Mm. You will come yourself. If you don't come, we'll leave you behind. Mm. Because we need to change this country. We are not going to, you know, pampas sicko fans. Mm. No, I won't do it. I'm not going to pampas sicko fans. We have to move this country. We have to develop this country. We cannot allow all these lands at the five northern regions, Afram Plains, Volta region, to lie undeveloped. Mm. My brother, Industrial revolution. Mm. If you vote for Canada Japan, industrial revolution. Mm. That is the only way we can move this country. Mm. Technology. Huh? We're going to build a whole technology city, smart city, you know, for these young men. They, they are technocrats. They mm. can do a lot of things, but there's no push. We have to push talented people like that. Engineering. Look, when Ghanaians go outside, they excel. Mm. Why is it that they don't? When they are enabling environment here, that mm -hmm. is what is happening. Recently, there was this conversation about the contestants of the National Science and Math Quiz, where people, where someone said, say, all these brilliant minds, they would finish the senior high school and leave the country, and just go to the U.S., U.K., wherever they want to go, and they will never come back. Yes, it's true. Let me tell you. Last month, we went to Ken UST, and the lecturers were complaining that. They are best students from first degree. They've all gotten scholarships to do PhD straight without masters, and they've all gone. Mm -hmm. They've left. And when they go, these white people, they are smart. When they see that, look, this chap is brilliant, they just hold you tight. Mm -hmm. By holding them tight, we are losing them. They will never come back. Mm -hmm. That's the challenge. Mm -hmm. So I will make sure, and it's all because the chemistry department, tech, they showed me an incubator one boy has designed. Can break the eggs about 4,000 a day, mm. and it costs only 30,000 cities. Nobody out there to promote. Mm. You know, these people, we have to get them and promote, a, you know, support them so that they can expand. Mm. Another challenge we have here is that there's a gap between the industries or the ministries and the universities. Mm. We have to bring them together. Mm. The universities and, and the industry. ministries and the industries, mm. the companies in this country, mm. should be working together. Mm. So, so the latest development and all those things, they share. Mm. Here, they are far apart. Mm. All these things we need to bring together, especially CSIR, mm. you know, the cattle, you know, our produce, you know, we need a lot of scientific aid that mm. will boost the economy. Arabo, so the final showdown, what is your message to the delegates out there? My final words to the delegates mm. are that one, they should vote for a man who will create employment, job opportunities for them, for life. Mm. Don't go and take money that within a month you spend it and come back mm. again to your your lifestyle, yeah. which is poverty. Again, they should make sure mm. nobody intimidates them. We are going to protect the ballot. Mm. That they are scaring them, saying that, oh, when you vote for Mr. A, we will know it's a lie. Mm. It's a lie. And we are not going to allow them to queue so that when you vote, you show it to this. No, nope. we are not going to allow what happened in 20. 6th August. So they all have to be bold and have confidence to vote for Kenya Japan, who stands for development. Mm. Let them compare messages from all the aspirants mm. and choose the one who has a message that will help the future and develop this country. Mm. Again, I am begging them, look, the super delegates, mm. they took 100,000 150,000 Navarra pickups, Lancusa, Prados, and the rest. So if they come to you 
and say that take 2,000 cities. They cannot give 2,000. But even if they give that, they've insulted you. Mm. Because you have the same votes. So they have to match up with what they yeah. give to if they, if they give them 100,000, I, I allow them to vote for them. Are you not encouraging politics of monetary inducement? I am rather discouraging. Okay. Because I'm saying that. Don't vote because of money. Mm. Because they've given some people 100,000, some people got cars. Mm. In Central Region, mm. in Ashanti Region, they can't like, even in Greater Accra here. Mm. And they will come to you and give you 2,000 cities. Mm. So my rather discouraging them because they can't pay 100,000. Okay. If they can't pay 100,000, it means you should vote for development. Who will develop you? It's Kenya Japan. Mm. Who will create employment for your children? So vote for development, don't vote for today's money that will not last even for a month. Mm. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, beautiful conversation with Honorable Kennedy at Japan. Uh, the final showdown is coming and his message is clear and very simple. Make your decision as well, however you will make them. Our job here is that Honorable, good luck and may God bless you for granting us this interview. Thank you very much. I hope you say everything that I've said, everything, as it is. Everything is going out. You know, because uh, sometimes, no. the way you guys do we, 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 I, I watched, <laughs> uh, I mean, about six of your interviews, and you were, you were always saying the media will destroy the country. Yeah, they will destroy the country. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Because the uh, example mm. is, when I went to Yana, mm. one radio station reported that, oh, the way Yana lambasted me mm. and everything, it was never true. Mm. Until his office mm. issued a, a statement. Sta a statement. So the media has not been fair to you. Well, but I will always speak the truth. Have you been fair to the media, though? Yes. Okay. Very, very fair. Mm. Because I own media, so why not? But it doesn't mean that if what you are saying is not true, yeah. I should allow it to pass. Thank you very much for for this interview. We do appreciate, and God bless you. Thank you. Good luck. Much. The Thank final, you. we will be, we will be watching okay. the final showdown. I'll give them a showdown. Yeah. Oh, showdown. Yes, I'll go on the form. Um, go on the form, yes. showdown. showdown. You see, yeah. the delegates are going to vote yeah. for their defender. Yeah. I've been defending them. Grassroots, so man. <laughs> Thank you very much.